Good evening, everybody, and welcome along to the Rangers Rabble. This is your Friday night phone-in. Um, your chance to have your say. You've heard us talk pish all week, so it's your turn now to uh, phone in and talk some pish yourself, because that's what we all do. Um, I am joined this evening by, uh, I would say, an experienced panel member and an astute one. We've got Kerr. How are you? I'm all right, Connor. Yourself? Not bad. Not bad at all. Aye. Um, Lewis, how are we doing? Aye, not bad, mate. I've had a wee, a wee hiatus for the, for the pod for a while, so it's good to be back. I know, I um, I know we introduced this as a Scottish football show there because this is the cast. <laughs> um, uh, well, before we start, as you can see there in the left-hand side corner of your screen, we are now sponsored by NordVPN. So if you are fancying getting yourself out of the cold weather um, and taking a nice quick hop over to Europe or America or somewhere lovely and tropical at this time of the year, you can do so with 63% off um, using the link in the description. So get that hit if that's your sort of thing. Um, Care, we shall start with last night. Um, a decent point away from home, all things considered, I think. Um, on the game itself, first half, quite frankly, we were hanging on a wee bit in the first half, weren't we? I mean, Jack Butland... You know, we're used to, you know, McGregor moments, but they're very fast becoming button moments these days. Um with, with some of the, the saves he's pulling off. Um what did you sort of make of the, the kind of start we made to the game? Um and the sort of the, the I would say slow burn for us to, to start motoring and doing things ourselves. That was a very poor start, slow start. I didn't think anybody was at it, probably apart from the keeper. We were we were only pressing, we were leaving wide open spaces at the back, middle of the park, back. They were walking through us. They weren't even having to do a lot to get through us. That was that easy for them at times. And when we did get the ball back, we were just giving it away constantly. Lammers was the main culprit in uh, Unstrom a few times, but I just thought they weren't at it. I thought there was a boxing match going, it would have been stopped uh, because Rangers were getting battered and they were very lucky, you know, to be four or five down at half time. And I was shouting at the telly. My wife would tell me to shut up. And then she started watching and she started saying, my God, they're rotten. And I says, I, exactly. <laughs> she was actually asking why. I don't know if Lewis can be answer this, but she was actually asking, is Dessers actually a footballer? Now, I couldn't answer that myself. So <laughs> I mean, Lewis gone. She said, how does he get a game? I've seen him before. So that's how much she was watching it because she was actually laughing at him. But no, that was poor Connor. And I thought, eh... I don't think they were great, but I can't. You can't say that about teams when you don't beat them. But they were better than Rangers were in the first half, far better. And it was just bad finishing by them and Jack Butland that saved us, can, uh, conceding because the rest of the side weren't the at it. And I, you can say is that because he's tried a different formation, maybe. But the basics weren't even there. They weren't doing nothing at all. They weren't following the runners. They weren't, there wasn't any movement in the, in the park. They were just watching players go by them. And like I said, Jack Butland, he must have been saying to himself, I'm shattered and it's only half time. But listen, the boy done really well last night. That's what, that's what we bought him for. And as people say, that's what he does. That's his job, saving it. But some of his saves are outstanding, weren't they? And it's like, even coming out, he's boxing, chasing one down, which we don't usually have. But no, I just thought, listen, the manager knows. I think he already knows after these games he's been in for who he can trust and who he can't but he's not going to see that just now because he needs to back them all to make them work for him because he's not got a lot of options but no, last night was a struggle in the first half It really was, uh, Lewis and I, I mean, I felt the, the tone was set very, very quickly I mean, after four minutes Sparta get right in behind us um, it's a decent bit of play for them um, however, you know, a, a ball has, has been passed through just in the left-hand side of your box and it's completely cut our defence wide open. Um, Jack Butlin produces not one, but two saves, because it's a double save, because he saves for the original shot and then, again, it's a Sparta player on the end of the, the follow-up as well. Um, we were just a bit... We were a bit disjointed, I felt, maybe at the start, 
took us a while to get in. Um, <clears throat> and actually, before I come to you on that, Lewis, um, we do have our first caller of the night. Uh, Alec. Alec, how are we? I'm very well, thanks. Good stuff. What's in your, your mind tonight? Right, Colin, I'll tell you what, I think we've got uh, a bit of a problem up the road in Ibrox, I'm talking about up the road to Helensburg, <laughs> that's why I said that. How are you doing, Scott? I'm more bad, Alec, I'm more bad. Good man. And Lewis too, how are you doing, pal? I'm not bad, mate, cheers for asking. Right, okay, what it is, frauds, 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 frauds. Number one, keep my roof. Much money is he drawing a week for Rangers? At the end of the day, what are we getting for Kima Roof? It astounds me that he's on the books. We need to get rid of this guy. He's an absolute leech on our club. And then secondly, we'll go to Lammers. I watched that game last night. I couldn't see Eden that Lammers was down was helping us at all. Absolutely useless. I mean, I, I'm, I'm 61 year old now. I could pull out a shirt and probably do a better job than he did last night. And I mean that, honestly. A wee bit of heart, a wee bit of soul, finding the passes and all the rest yet. I've heard enough of this talk about the only time to settle in. Oh, come on. How much time are we going to get here? Are we going to wait to the, year, the other crowd of about 14 points ahead of us? And, you know, I mean, that's, that's my worst nightmare. We have not, well, we have not. Bill has done a magnificent job of screwing us completely, even to the point of where we couldn't pull Yellman last night and we had to make up uh, a, a makeshift left back. But having said that, bloody hell did Seema have a game. Eh? Did Seema have a game or no? There's a boy that can play out of the park. Anyway, just your ideas on this whole roof thing. I want him out of Ibrox as soon as possible. And a stretcher, if we have to do it. <laughs> well, I mean, given the torrid time he said, there's every chance that it will be in a stretcher, Alex. Um, I mean, Lewis, what's your take on that? I mean, I think Ruth... He said he's injury problems, but I, I think he's contributed as well uh, at times when he's when he's been fit. He's certainly got a few goals. Listen, I think in the, the whole, I probably agree with, with Alec. I don't know if I'd be as brutal as, as the man himself, but um, he certainly got a point that whilst Ruth has all the talent in the world and he's probably the most talented striker we've seen and and over the last 10 years on being able to score goals. He certainly not started in our football matches and, and it's been like almost two years now that this guy is barely out of the medical department at Rangers. And if you're in the medical department at Rangers, it, it's very unlikely you're going to get out. You know, he's not the only player that, that's been cursed by, by this football club in, in recent times. You know, the likes of Katic, Haji, Halanda, all had very serious long-term injuries. Tom Lawrence as well, I mean... He's another one that, that could dip into this conversation. So talented, such a good footballer. And listen, I think we need to be careful because this guy's still a human being. He's not doing anything rank. He hasn't, he hasn't chosen to be injured. But there does come a point where Rangers need to sit down and go, listen, we're not going to offer you another contract. I think it would be terrible business. As good as, as Ruth is, he's north of 30 years of age now. And he's injured again. Hi, Alec, on you go. Nothing against you, mate, of course not, but I think you're wrong there. I think he knows exactly what he's doing. Okay. He's playing two or three games and going off sick, getting that money every week. I'd love to do that. When I was so, my, my, my working days, to get a, a couple of months off work would be a luxury. He's at it. He's at it, guys. Let's no mess about here. Offload them ASAP, get rid of them, and watch this. He'll do a Hollander. Oh, well, he'll do a Hollander. Next club he goes to, oh, he'll be great for six months. And then he'll play the same role again. He'll go down the same path. 
The guy should wear a bloody mask. The guy should be wearing a mask like Danilo, because he's a robber. <laughs> uh, I mean, Alec, look, we all share your frustration about Ruth, right? Of course we do. We, we don't want him to be fully fit and playing most weeks. Uh, to be fair, in the early part, the start of the season, um, we did get a f- a, actually a fairly good, surprisingly good run of games out of him, um, considering the, the issues he's had. But I, I'm not so sure we, you can say that he's he's doing it deliberately, he's, he's roaming a living. I mean, how, how does a player deliberately get injured constantly? You, you don't. Some players, unfortunately, um, are, you know, to coin the phrase that, that Mark uses a lot, are, are made of Gamar Ruth. Connor. Yes. When Clement came into the Rangers uh, homestead, he was the first one to say, I want to see all the medical reports. I want to see all what's wrong with these guys. When they go out injured, I want to see a full report on them. Do you know what why do you think he said that? Because he's wanting to identify these these fraudulent players. And Roof's at the top of my list. Okay, we've got Barisic that can, all, that can go down with us after 10 minutes and then end up playing for Croatia. We are suckers here, pal. We are suckers for these injury-prone clowns. They've done yeah. nothing to help us. I'm being accused of being really rotten here and cruel. I don't care. I think if I had the same mentality and the same power of Ibrox as has Mr. Clement now, I hope he roots out the frauds. I hope he sends them packing and that'll free up some money to pay for good players. Look, I'm raging tonight. You can probably tell, but I'm absolutely raging that we are being treated like idiots at Ibrox by no, these clowns. I, right? I totally- Totally understand, Alec. Um, and I mean, listen, you're entitled to your opinion, you know. Um, uh, you know, no everybody will agree with you, um, but there'll be some there that will agree. And I mean, care to be fair, Alec, I think there's there's a good point he does make in there in terms of, you know, come on, wanting to look at the, the medical histories and stuff like that. Now, part of that, you would think, wouldn't you, will be simply that he want to understand, right, who's, you know, injured, how long are they out, what's the prognosis long term, are they going to repeatedly get injured, um, you know, and who's reliable for him basically, so that he can maybe look at in January or further down the line in the summer, shipping on a few and bringing in players um, to, to fill those those gaps, so that, I mean, that's not a bad point, is it? No, but it's only right, Clement looks at stuff like this, because every manager has to do their due diligence to the club to see what they've got and who the players are, what the players are all about, and listen, Roof's one of the first ones I think has to go out the door. I'm not saying we should pay him off because depending on what his legal situation is with his contract, he just kind of pay guys off unless we offer him a good deal and accepts it. But listen, he's one of the ones that should be leaving either January or the summer. But there's others, others there as well. It's not just him. Listen, Kamaru's the type of guy we always say, what if? But he done this. But that's, that's his all going back to two years ago. He's done nothing in the last two years for me. And he doesn't deserve to still be a Rangers player. And it's not because he's not good enough. It's because we can't we rely on him. And we're a club where we can't have players sitting watching games like us. They have to be involved. And they're getting paid a lot of money not to be involved. So unless you are... Sometimes you just have to go and cut our nose off to spite our face. Listen, this is what Ross Wilson did. He went out and bought players who thought they're quality footballers. Now maybe not we'll get them cheap or we can get them on this because they're injury prone. But when they come to Rangers, we can make sure they stay injury free. We've done it with a lot of players in the past, and it doesn't seem we don't really seem to get a good run of results with us. I mean, we mentioned Herlanda with Roof. We've also you know, John Suter's one. It's you're always looking in the back with John because you think a bad injury he could be out for a long time. So I think sometimes we we'll have to look at Lawrence is the same at Lewis touched on. You can have four or five, six players who you're paying a lot of money for sit in the stands most week when you're trying to go for the league, you're trying to win games are trying to do well in Europe and then you're supposed to be your better players so we'll have to look at that as well and so come on it's right to look at all this stuff on each players and say right what what can I get for him if it's not enough of what he wants then he's got every right to say listen your contract's not getting extended or we're bringing in other guys to replace you maybe maybe nobody's good quality wise at the start but 
they might be more fitter, they might play more games and they might develop. So I'm all for them looking at that stuff like this because I think it's been on too long at Rangers. Not just in the last couple of years, but it's been... We've had a history in the past. We can look back at a lot of players. We've had a history of buying guys and then they get injured and they've been staying there for a while. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Alec, thanks very much for the call, mate. And I know it goes without saying because uh, you're a regular, but give us a call back anytime. Um, right, Lewis, I'll come back to you where, where we were before Alec phoned. Um, which he, he kind of sort of touched on a bit. Um, we did defence last night. What was your overall thoughts of Ben Davies slotting in as he did sort of in, in the left back area? Um, obviously, with Barisic being injured and Yel Masno being in, in the squad, did it did that cause some of the disjointedness for you? Did it just take them a while to, to get used to that? Because Davies is a, is a centre back, isn't he? I, well, I, I think the, the first half, um, you would probably say it was Mary a uh, a left centre back and Sima kinda was deployed in the the wider advanced area. Um and I think it was just unfamiliar territory for, for the three centre backs. I think even and Suter actually had a good game overall, but you did see him a, a wee bit get caught in no man's land because Suter likes to take a, a wee run up the pitch and because you know he was it was a wee bit further out wide, it was leaving a lot more space because Tavernier is usually there, but it, he was a bit further forward. So it was just unfamiliar territory, and it, it just it didn't work. Um, like Clement said, uh, it's difficult to get a team to adjust to a system like that in two weeks, never mind two days. And I'm not giving them a buy. They're professional footballers, and they're very, very good professional footballers to be playing for this football club. So they should be able to adjust to that better than they did. But I think that was the explanation. It was just too difficult to to adjust to that that system. And it, and it, f- it threw a lot of players, you know, after game, I think that the, the midfield pairing looked lost the full first half as well. Hmm. But I just want to make a point on the, you know, a lot of people are talking about people making mistakes when they're passing the football at Rangers, right? And you need to understand there's a difference between making silly mistakes and making a mistake because you're trying something diff- difficult. So see John Lundstrom, John Lundstrom makes silly, lazy mistakes because he's not an intelligent football player. See Raskin, Raskin makes mistakes because he's trying to pass the ball forward into dangerous areas nine times out of ten. Now, that doesn't mean Raskin can he still have a shit game and have lazy moments as well, because he certainly can. And John Lundstrom, on the contrary, can have a good game. But mm. that's a difference. And I think, see when people start saying Lammers and Dessels are, are both duds, one of them is a dud, and that's Dessels. Lammers is not having a great start to his Rangers career, but there's signs of a very, very gifted technical footballer. But it's when he gets to that last moment that he just doesn't fulfil an assist or a goal, and that will need to be addressed. But there's at least signs. Dessers, there is nothing. I am sorry. I have tried so hard, and I know he's beat, beat a man when he's down, but my God, like, what? I just don't understand. There must have been something that Rangers scouting department seen to spend three and a half million on that guy, and he's twenty eight years of age. It's not like he's gonna he's gonna change much. This is the player that we bought, and this is the player that we'll get to keep. So I think that needs to be addressed. The the, the minute that that Danilo can start and start consistently is when this Rangers team will shift, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, well. Firstly, to slightly stick up for one, he made a goal saving tackle last night, which we can't forget. Um, was actually a, a brilliant piece of defending because if he missed times, that it's a penalty, and if he just misses all together, it's a goal anyway. So I thought he'd, I thought he'd done well in that situation at least. Um, but on the, the Danilo point, uh, care because that was a positive for last night, you know, getting Danilo back in, um, after that just horrific injury that he picked up, um, you know, back with a mask and all that sort of stuff, which is. You know, the done look these days for a lot of players, it's becoming a, a habit. But, um, you know, Clement today in the press did say that, um, obviously, him having been out for a while and stuff like that, he thought he looked bright, but the focus is on making him stronger and he's still a work in progress. Well, would you go along with that? Because um, I think he's a £6 million player. It's, it's a big price tag to come to Ibrox with. Um, and we're, we're all looking at him going... He's he's basically got to be the new Morelos. He's got to be the guy that's going to eventually start firing for us because Dessers 
doesn't look like he's got 20 goals in him a season. And Roof, whilst if he was solely fit all season, would have 20 goals in him, just can't stay fit. So, um, <clears throat> would you say he's a, a work in progress? Maybe fitness wise, because he has been now injured, but I wouldn't say he's a work in progress because he's done well in his career up to now. So, I think it's just fitting into the way the manager wants him to play and the way we play. And getting up to that's for the Scottish game because he's came for Dutch football. But I think when you come on last night, you seen he was chasing the things down. He was using his size. He was trying to go by for it. He was unlucky with his shot. I don't know if the keeper saved it, but when it came off the bar at the end, listen, he wants to go forward. You can see he's, he's up for a chance. The problem with Dessers is Dessers hides. He deliberately hides. He stands behind defenders so he don't pass him the ball. He, he hides or he go, chucks himself in the ground. Listen, I'm not saying he's a fraud. Like, I know the lawyer said that and it was probably tongue-in-cheek because he's a professional football player. But I would rather have Joe Newbley for Livingston up front in Dessers because a big man puts himself about and he actually tries. He tries and he's no scared of physical contact for Dessers. is scared against Habs. He scored a good goal. He took it really well. But he was hiding. He was standing by him, Paul Hanlon at one point. It's like, don't pass me the ball, I'm marked. He didn't want to move. And that's, that's been scared. He's scared to make a mistake. He's not getting any confidence in himself. And if that's the point, if that's the case, he's better off from being there. So I would start Danilo now. Yeah, he's coming back for injury. He's wearing the mask. But he looked up for it when he came on last night. And I think there's goals in him. You've seen it before he got injured, the goal he scored the header. I think there's, there's goals in this guy. And I think we need to get... The problems with us, it is isn't he? Defensively, we're not that bad. My dirty front, we're poor. It's scoring the goals. Do you know what I mean? I agree with Lewis on Raskin. Raskin likes to take a risk. Risks don't always come off, but when you take a risk, sometimes they do. Whereas Lundstrom doesn't take a risk. Lundstrom, if you want to get better, John Lundstrom can't beat the Rangers. You have to upgrade and see certain players and John Lundstrom's win them. I think between now, either January, probably the summer, because it's easy to get players. I think there'll be a lot of surprises at the Rangers, the players that uh, Clement actually releases. I think it'll surprise a few people because I think he wants to mould his team into his own and he'll look for different players as well. But listen, it's you, you start with, you know, against Hearts, Hearts are only great. So I would start with him on Sunday. You have to. After we finished our night, you start with him. It, it will get you goals if you give him chances. Yeah, I would, I would listen. I'd, I'd love that moment to see him start personally um, on Sunday. Um, and we'll come back to that in a second. But I just want to say, I see all your comments coming in on YouTube. If you have something to say, pick up that phone. The number is at the bottom of the screen. Give us a call. Alex's been on. Um, he's shared his thoughts and opinions with us. All you need to do is pick up that phone and do the same. Uh, Martin is anxiously awaiting your call to put you through to us. Um, I mean, I... Lewis, obviously, Danilo last night did have one of what I would say was probably the two main chances that we, we had to score um, in the main. I mean, obviously, Lammers has an opportunity, which is, to be fair, he's, he's put just a good save out of the goalkeeper um, for the edge of the box. Uh, and then, obviously, Danilo hits the bar at the end. Um, I mean, to be fair, <laughs> I think had we scored, it would have would have been picking their pockets to be to be perfectly honest with you. Um, but leaning into the the game at the weekend, that's positive signs. If, you know that intent can stay there, and if you know Lammers is, is starting to build his confidence to get shots away, and if if Danilo does start, or even if it doesn't, he comes on, knowing that you, you at least have some sort of threat in those forward areas um, it can help, I mean we saw it against Hibs, we were very high tempo and intensity and we were looking threatening <clears throat> just about every time we went forward we would score, so I mean, do you think this current group of players are capable of keeping up that level, intensity and that threat going forward? I, I don't have another choice but to try my absolute hardest to believe that <laughs> this group of players are capable of doing something I'm just kind of Pushing all my chips on to Clement and and Holton that that he's the savior. Come on, come on. Come on. Sorry. Yes, remember, oh. we're under strict instructions now for a gaffer. We don't want to get in trouble here. Come on, Clement. Apologies. <laughs> um, I'm off the cast smoke, so it's it's hard, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think uh, you know when you come to Scotland, when the the quality of player in general is near the highest standard, 
a very, very good manager can level at the playing field, even between Rangers and Celtic. I do genuinely believe if you've got a good enough manager, they can get something at a, a bang average squad. And we'd be struggling to even say this squad is bang average on current form. But, you know, I've not been on the podcast for a while and it, it, it's, it's so funny just seeing all the comments and all our opinions and how different everybody is. It's like, I'm slated for saying that Lammers is technically good. Like, as if I'm saying he's the next coming of Kevin De Bruyne, do you know what I mean? He, he is technically good, he's got very good feet, but as soon as that ball leaves his foot as the problem, he can't. He, it's like he doesn't have any power behind anything. Can he pass or shoot to save his life? And, you know, I was one of the people that were championing keeping Yanis Adji because I didn't think we'd upgraded on him much. But no, it's just, just it's difficult to get back in there. But I, um, it will need to be the manager that saves the day, I think, until January or mid late the summer. <clears throat> Absolutely. Well, ask and we shall receive. We have another caller on the line. John, how are we? Brand new caller. All right, boys, how are you doing, man? All right, John. Oh, good, man. John. Brand new. Hey, it's just a bit full clever. Do you think a um, big man will sort us out and get decent players? Care? I'm hoping he does, John. I'm hoping he's got a few players already in his wee notebook he can, he can go for. It depends on what money we government is spend and it depends on if he's told to get rid of some players first of all before we can go out and buy. But I think he will. I think he'll bring in people who will play the, way, play the system he wants and they'll be maybe technically a more physically better than what we've got. Listen, we need we need new blood. I know we, we spent a bit of money in the summer, but some of the guys he brought in only for us. I mean, and we can sit here and say they're no good players. They're, they are good players. They're just, they're just no for us. Them. Different type of player. We need something different, and I'm hoping come in, goes and gets a couple of guys who fit why he wants to play and more physical, be a bit more pace. But a team we've not got a lot of pace in the side. I like to buy in a couple of guys who's got a wee bit more pace in them because I feel we like that. My dirty front pace, but I also at the back as well. I have to say, I just apart from Seema, there's not many guys that can run fast. Aye, aye. Well, my tondo, that's it. My tondo, isn't it? Yeah, my turn. Uh, what about, well, and that, uh, sorry, another question, guys. What about Hadji? Do you think you should bring Hadji back? Um, where's you want to come in on that? I mean, I don't know if we have that option to, to recall Hadji for loan, do we? Um, I, I don't know for certain. I would imagine we, we probably would have. Um, the bigger clubs tend to to have a, a clause inserted that they can bring them back in January just in case. But it, it just depends. It depends. Clement might think, you know what, I, I've seen what that boy's capable of in the past. I might want to have a look at him now because it's a clean slate for everybody. And, you know, like I said, I was getting slated for saying I would keep Hadji, but I've seen what Hadji can do. I, I know it might have been two or three seasons ago, but I've still seen it. Do you know what I mean? He's still only 24 years of age. So... <laughs> I don't know. It depends. It, it just depends on what, what the manager thinks. But for me personally, I think I would bring Hadji back. And then even next season, I would look at, at Alex Lowry as well to, to try and see if he can get some meaningful game time. Hadji comes back for me 100%. If there's a recall, you bring him back. I mean, John, what do you make of that then? Uh, Lewis saying about Alex Lowry as well, potentially. Um would you bring them both back or, or just Hadji? Um, and would that oh, be... Both, I'd bring both back. Both. Mm-hmm. Aye. I've got to start putting Young Lowry into the team, man. Hmm. No, I'd listen, I totally agree with you, John, mate. I mean, I think um, the, the other point is, well, obviously you don't know come January um, if or what kind of budget, you know, come on is likely to get, but... Is there any particular areas of the park that you feel is is needing reinforced uh, more than, than others? Yeah, yeah, central defender, right back and left back. It's a, a whole new back line you're enough there, kid. Um Yeah, aye, aye, aye. A, set, a, a new central defender, man, and um, a left back and a right back. 
So I if, think you bring, we need... if you bring in a new central defender, then John, I'll ask you this question. If you bring in a new central defender, which of the current three do you do you drop? Who who falls out for you? Any one of them. Any one of them. Goldstone, Suter, Davies, any one of them you could drop, honestly. Kev, okay, your uh, thoughts on that? Seeing you nodding along there quite a bit. To be honest with you, he's probably got a point. If he had been playing this season, anyone could probably go, but knowing the manager, I might, might keep Goldson. Uh, he seems to be the one the managers keep, but you just never know. But I think we do need an RC and a half. I think we're, we're short in there, especially. Physicality is sort of got it, but he, he lacks something for me, John Suter. So he does. Golson is getting on. Davis has always struggled since he's come in. I like Ben Davis as a footballer, but I think he struggled. You didn't mention Balligan, but listen, I don't even know how Balligan will, will play again for us. But I feel we need a more dominant centre half. Doesn't have to be good on the ball. Listen, I know a lot of team like to play out for the back, but. Sometimes you kind of get somebody who's a good footballer plus a good centre half, especially for the price range we're paying. So I'd rather go for a defender rather than a football player at the moment in time. But I do agree we need to full back. Sterling, I don't know what's wrong with him. He's injured again. Uh, Red Van, I don't know if the manager's going to trust him down the left. Listen, if he gives him a chance, I'd be happy with that. But I don't know if he will. Because I think Borna will be away at the end of the season. Uh, Tav, to me, just looks a shadow himself. I think he'll still be at the club next season, but he looks a shadow of himself. And I just feel... I mean, we're, we're trying to, re it's kind of rebuild the rebuild, isn't it? That's what it's going to have to be. <laughs> so it depends how much money he's got to play with. I, will, I hear Shorten, man, that the board gave him some money, man. January and next year, right, next summer. Cheers, boys. Thanks a lot, man, and all the best, man. I listen, all the best to yeah, yourself, You too, mate. Cheers, Sean. Give us a call back anytime, mate. Great points there. Um... Right, well, I think last night we've kind of covered in the main. Um, I think we'd all agree that ultimately it's a decent point away from home and we'll see what happens in a fortnight when we bring them back to Ibrox, hopefully by then, you know, but we've had a bit more time under Colin as well, so that might help. Um, but I want to touch on something else that's happened today before we look at the Hearts game. Um, so... Rangers put out a statement earlier on um, with regards to the scheduling for fixtures around Christmas. So, Motherwell game, which was originally slated to be on December the 23rd, has been shifted to Christmas Eve for broadcast purposes. And before I come at the guys, I'll just read out the club's full statement. Uh, excuse the slightly hoarse tone of voice while I do it. Um, so the club have said the club fully appreciates the lengths our supporters travel for these matches and the sacrifices that are made in order to back their team at every opportunity. Sky Sports movement of the match to Christmas Eve a day where many supporters will have other plans and also where public transport is limited feels unnecessary given the potential broadcast slots available to them on the Saturday. The club also learned of this fixture change only an hour prior its external announcement, which allowed no time for any dialogue or debate with either Sky Sports or the SPFL. Earlier this season, the club asked for the uh, fixture race at Mirren on Sunday, the 8th of October, to kick off later than 12 o'clock, uh, given the team flew over five hours back from Cyprus on the Friday evening to allow for more preparation and recovery time. This request was denied. Sky Sports are a valued league partner and as a club we enjoy a strong working relationship with them. This decision, however, is extremely poor and shows a lack of regard to our supporters. Kerr, what is your thoughts on that? Um, I did see today that it isn't just ourselves. I've seen that uh, Chelsea down south have had a they, I think their away trip to Wolves was shifted as well to Christmas Eve. I mean, it's a it's a strange thing to do. I mean, how, how are you expecting fans, you know, to do that travelling on Christmas Eve when there's, there's no, you know, if, unless you drive, you know, you're, you're going to be snookered here, aren't you? Because, okay, some people might say, well, Motherwell's not that far away for, for Glasgow, but come on, that's, it's a poor decision, isn't it? 
That is Connor, but you know yourself, as soon as games get moved for TV, there's not a lot the club can do about it. It's in the contract, I think. The league signs at the start of the season, it gets moved for TV rights. Listen, Sky will say they handsomely plays, don't they? So they've got a right to move games for different reasons. And some people might be happy with it, fan wise, some might not be. It is a poor for travelling, unless you want to support us, boss, where you die, but you say it's. It could be difficult to get to, but like I say, Sky don't really care, they just want the viewing figures. Christmas Eve, they think most people will be off, sit down, watch a couple of games of football, and we'll get the viewers coming. That's how we probably move the Chelsea game as well. But it's not great, but listen, I'm sure the Rangers, are, Rangers are still sell their tickets, not the fans will still go, but it's not great. And listen, we know Scottish football is not going to really get any backbone, so they were never going to argue the point, were they? No, and I mean, Lewis, you know. Oh, well, before we do that, um, we just need to thank Davy sixteen forty two for the five gifted Rabble podcast memberships, um, and congratulations to whoever those five lucky people were who have been gifted them. Fantastic, um, yeah, Lewis. I mean, this this to me, it, it it's just smacks of not really caring about the supporters so much. I mean, ultimately, supporters are the lifeblood. A football, you know, we we all seen the COVID season where no supporters could go. It wasn't an enjoyable watch. You know, nobody enjoyed piped in cheers or booze or whatever else. Um, and given, as Rangers pointed out in the statement, they they certainly had scope to schedule it in on the Saturday. Um, and yet they've, they've chosen not to do that. I mean, is it uh, uh, okay? As Kerr says, the television rights and stuff, it, it creates its own um, sort of issue. But does it just show a, a total disregard for for fans? I mean, uh, are any of us sitting here actually surprised that this has happened? It, you know, other than old firm, we're the lowest of the low to Sky. You know, but we'll know the glitz and the glamour of the, the Premier League. And it's done to the idiots that run the SPFL. That they must have about one brain cell between them because, like, in, in this modern age, right, there must be some other streaming service out there that would offer us probably at least double our Sky deal in order to stream Scottish football just for the fact to have Rangers versus Celtic. But we have still agreed to this absolutely demonic TV deal from Sky Sports, and this just goes to show how poor it is. Like, it's just, like Rangers said in the statement, it's an understatement. In fact, that's a total disregard. Christmas Eve, really? Hmm. For everybody and anybody involved, whether that be the people involved with the club or externally with the fans, it's a joke, it's disgusting. And it's just, it's no surprising as well, but that's the sad thing. There's, there's absolutely no shock that this has actually came to fruition. I mean, when, when the Eredivisie is mating like six times us when they're a relatively similar quality of football beneath the top teams. It's just, it's a joke. Absolute joke. Yeah, it certainly is. Um, I'll bring well, you back. Sorry, Connor, what I will say is, I mean, nobody used to bother about a New Year's Day game. And that, you, didn't really get, you didn't really get transport and that on that day. And we all loved that fixture, didn't we? So you kind of have, yeah. have to look at it both ways. But is it the difference that that's an old forum game though, and this is Motherwell? It's still a football match at the end of the day. You still having to get there, and you, I mean, I still love going out and hug my knee and then wherever you were in the morning, you woke up, you just went straight to the halls, whatever, and then get the bus to the game. Do you know what I mean? So that was the same. We didn't get much transport on that day, New Year's Day. So I'm just trying to play devil's advocate here, as in yeah. we've done it for a reason, but we've had games before when it's been. Issues in the past, and we just we just have to go on. I agree with Lewis to a point where as we, we probably would get a better deal somewhere else, but if not get the balls to go up and say to this guy, we don't want your deal and go else. We, we just take what we're given and be happy with it. And then you've got Doncaster getting jobs elsewhere and stuff like that. But you just listen, the fans will go, some will be happy with it. But I've seen a few people in the comments saying that's great watching Rangers and Christmas Eve. We are we are we baby or whatever. So, so some people are happy with it, some people aren't. They? No, listen, I get that. Um, uh, to be fair, though, you, you know, you've said it yourself, th those are people who will be watching for the house as opposed to having actual travel there. Um, 
once again, I'll reiterate the fact this is the phone in, so it's your opportunity to get your point of view in. Um, you know, what do you make of the, the statement today um, that's been made, or any opinions or thoughts you've got about the Hearts game, or anything else that you've heard, or just anything else you've got on your mind in general uh, to do with Rangers? Pick up that phone, the number is at the bottom of your screen. Um, and believe me, I can tell you from experience because I used to be a caller, it is worth it. Um, I mean, the thing for me though, Lewis, with what Kerr's saying there, and, and I totally I can understand what he's saying, and actually makes a, a good argument actually about the, the new year fixture. But it, it just seems to me why is it? I mean, the Rangers pointed out in their statement that when we requested a game, you know, a kickoff time to be changed, not even the day. Just the kickoff time to be moved back a couple of hours to three, four o'clock, whatever it was, and that gets turned down, but you know, because it's trying to otherwise we've come back off it. Um, <laughs> I, you know, we've come back off European competition. So why, why does it? Why didn't they not play ball the other way about? Do you know what I mean? Like if they can, if you're told like just accept this, um, and move on, then surely we should be able to say, well, why, why would you not scratch your backs as well? Because they probably know the answer, and the answer is be tough luck because you've you've agreed to a contract. So that's that's just that in it. Unfortunately, it needs it needs a collective decision for the rest of the Scottish football as well. That's a problem. They all need to grow a set of balls and say, "Listen, we deserve more than this," and we do. Like I know the rest of the league, and to be honest, right now Rangers isn't they of great quality at the minute, but you know. As a, as a footballing nation, I think Scotland deserve better than what we get for Sky. And and see, see like, TV deals, that is going to become a thing of the past very soon. So Rangers and Celtic and all the other teams in Scotland would be very smart to try and jump on some sort of streaming service because I promise you, TV in a whole in the next few decades is probably going to be gone or certainly starting to phase out a wee bit. So... Rangers and because all I really care about is Rangers should really be be looking into you know bringing that to the board and saying listen, let's try and move with the times here. Let's see if you know like an Amazon Prime or a, a buy a player or something will want to pick up the SPFL because they have money to do it. Especially the likes of Amazon probably get more money than Sky. <laughs> Aye, probably probably just a few quid. Um, right, well. Just as quick as that, we have got uh, a third caller of the evening on the line, Melanie. How are you this evening, Melanie? Hi, Connor. I'm really good. Um, so my point for the panel is, did you see the interview with Graham Sooners today on Super Scoreboard? Um, and what capacity do you think he's going to come back to the club? Uh, Kerr, I must admit, I didn't see his interview on Super Scoreboard. Um, I well, I've seen it on TikTok. It was super scoreboard. Yeah. Um, no, listen. I mean, we've had the chat bef before about the his position at the club. For me, I, I would have him there uh, in, in nothing more than a sort of ambassadorial role. I don't think he needs to have any kind of direct link um, to the, the playing squad or, or anything like that. Um, I mean, Kerr, would you go along with that? Would you have him in a more, I don't know, director of football? No, when I have them data football, just uh, like yourself, an ambassador or maybe a, a consultancy, whatever, but no director of football after saying that Frank Lampard was his choice for manager. That kind, that kind of song the boat for me. Uh, he said that Frank should have got it. But yeah. Yeah. listen, if Scream comes back, he's got a lot of ideas as a football man. We've not got many football men up at the, on the board at the moment, so he would, he would do well. He knows the club, he's been there as a manager, he supported the club as a boy, and somebody with that experience. And knowledge would be a good thing for the club and also and maybe knows people who want to invest as well. But no, I would have him back, but I don't know what role can mark on, but I agree with you, Connor. I'd be an ambassador role because getting on an age and you probably wouldn't want to put in a lot of hours, but just even having them there would be good for the club. I, I loved it when he says to Jim White, Look, I'm a Rangers man. You know, for me that was brilliant, you know, and that's what I get the game soonest, that he's a pure Rangers man. And and he, and he did say himself that it would be a sort of an ambassador role because he loves the club and wants to help the club. And I think that's quite genuine. Do you guys think? 
Well, listen, I think it is. I think he does, obviously, as you say. Um, he, he, he's clearly, you know, a Rangers man, as he says, and he does care about the club. Um, but we've had Rangers men in the past come in and it's not worked um, for, for one reason or another. I mean, look, I'm a great believer. You always, you've always got to um, respect your legends and keep them about the club. And it's always good, I think, for your current crop to, to recognise those that came before them. And, and actually, they can be good learning trees because they know the expectations when you come into I mean, we talk about rebuilds there. Graeme Souness knows all about a rebuild. He he done a, a hell of a rebuild when he came in um, in the sort of mid-80s to late 80s. Um, I'm sure Kerr will remember a lot more about that than, than me and Lewis will. Um, so he's well, an easy Because um, Kerr's actually older than me. <laughs> Don't cut yourself, oh, Melanie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, you're older than me. Oh, no, you're 72, aren't you? Aye, aye, I'm 72, aye. <laughs> Oh, I'm 71, so there we're on par. We're on par. On par, aye. Like, what's, what's a year? That's it. What's a year? Well, that's what's a year. Well, anyway, thanks very much, guys. Absolute pleasure, Melanie. And uh, right, please give us a call back anytime. <clears throat> um, <laughs> well, fantastic stuff there for Melanie. Um, um, <clears throat> right. Before Kerr gets his pipe and his slippers in his old age. Um, turning to the game then on Sunday, I think it is, isn't it? Sunday. Uh, um, Lewis, what's your kind of expectations come Sunday? I mean, I think the manager said that it's a game that we're kind of looking to, you know, that he wants us to be dominant in. Um, you know, as we should be, you know, you're at home against the Hearts team who, let's be fair, got. Scudded realistically um, at home the last time out. So, um, do you see us doing that to them as well? And who would you start in, in, in that game? I take it Red Van would come straight back in for you. Aye, aye, hundred um, percent. Go straight back to the the back four. Um, I'd probably just go with you know Davies and Goldson would probably stay. Um, unfortunately, to have a need at the minute. And obviously Red Van. Um Raskin keeps his place for me. And as Sifuentes, I take it he'll still be injured. I, I don't even remember hearing anything about um Sifuentes being being injured. So that was news to me. Um but I Raskin probably partner Lundstrom can't well hopefully get more minutes in his legs. I think he had a, a bit of a spark. I think Cartmell's our best player when, when when he's played properly and when he's um fully fit. I think he's He's maybe even the best player in Scotland on, on ability, so definitely get my legs into him. Seema has been outstanding, and then Danilo straight in there. Don't want to see this as ever again. Um, Danilo straight in there for me. But in terms of the game itself, I think th there's absolutely no reason why Rangers cannot absolutely destroy Hearts. Hearts have been so poor this season, and we'll, we'll probably beat a better team um, last time out in Hub, so... Absolutely no reason why we can't beat Hearts, and it tends to be a bit of an easier fixture for some reason in recent history for Rangers against Hearts. So I'm hoping for for a good few goals. Well, that would do me just fine. That would that'd be a nice way to spend my Sunday afternoon. I wouldn't, wouldn't take care watching Rangers pump a few goals past um, Hearts, and especially sticking it to that wee snake Stephen E. Smith as well. That would just be the icing in the cake, would it? Um, do you see that? happening um and would you be starting well, obviously you would be starting to know we could have had that chat but um is that would there be you know any scope for um sorry your gaffer is putting stuff in your chat by the way that has thrown me for an absolute um but i um just quickly before you answer my question care there is time to get one more call in if you pick up that phone right now Martin will get you straight through to us. Um, we've got about nine minutes left of the show, so get the phone picked up. But um, I care. Do you think we'll will it be a comfortable afternoon on Sunday? Hopefully, I mean we've got the same final of form week, haven't we? A well against them, so two games in a row. So it's listen. I don't think Hearts are a great side at all. I, I've watched them a few times. I think they're poor. I think they're worse than us at the back. Leave ourselves wide open. 
But you just never know with Rangers. You don't know where Rangers are going to turn up. That's the issue this season. You can, we can turn up and play really well, or we can turn up and look like we don't know each other. But I think we will win on Sunday by saying that. I think last week I thought we'd done really well. Hibs were quite opened as well at the back. I thought they'd try to play too much football. So I think we will win. I think he'll go with a similar side to what Connor said. I hope he hope starts, Daniel. He can always take him off later on. I'd rather he started him off and come on later on. Because I think in these games, so I would go with Daniel, I would go with Seymour. I wouldn't start Lammers. I would bring in McCoy's and I think he deserves a chance. Uh, so I would now play Campbell back at his usual. Just play him as a 10 and I would play Raskin and Lund- Lundstrom. I'm not Lundstrom's biggest fan, but there's not a lot else to pick from at the moment. Uh, you could always go with Jack Ryan right enough. Is that the boy's name? <laughs> <laughs> Or Ryan Jack, as, as you say. Uh, no, I think we'll play with Lundstrom and Raskin. And the, the defence, like you said, it's going to be obviously Tav, Golson. I think Davis will stay and Red Van comes in. So I think we've got enough to beat Hearts. I think we're going to have to beat Hearts two weeks in a row. But it's just getting these players to believe in themselves. That's all we do. Because we know, we know we're not a great side, but we know we're a decent side and we're good enough to beat Hearts. If we don't go after, if we kind of beat Hearts, then there's issues at the club, bigger issues than we think. But because Hearts are rotten, they are rotten. Stephen Naismith, we're lucky we're still in a job coming in this season. Uh, yep, absolutely agree with that. Um, 100%. Um, I mean, Lewis, I wonder, um, do you think there's scope? Because we're talking there about obviously the midfield and stuff and, and who we start, but. Do you think it's basically coming off of the European League? Would there be any scope for a, a McCausland potentially to get a, a sniff? Maybe not necessarily starting, but potentially will he come on off the bench? Because he's he's looked bright, I must say, in the couple of appearances he's made. Um, I don't want to, you know, be, be a, um, a wee bit too brutal, but like it is no difficult to look bright right now. Um, I'm I'm not a massive watcher of the B team. You know, I'm well versed on, on some of the the more prominent names, but you know the likes of McCausland, I don't really mind his name coming up. And anybody I've spoke to, he's no no one that stood out and listened. That doesn't mean he can't come on and turn into a, a player. But if it was maybe Zach Lovelace, I, I would consider it. But I don't see young McCausland making too much in inroads. Um, I think it's just the the the, the wide situation is it's difficult because I was on the the train that Seema was was very poor and I still think he has a, a poor natural footballer but he, he's a very good finisher he's a, he's a true athlete and he's he's actually starting to you know fix his the, the simple bit of his game with his touches and stuff so um, when Matondo gets back in, <laughs> um, I. So no, this, you need that. I'm trying to be professional here and you two are howling in the, the screen. <laughs> Apologies, audience. Absolutely disgraceful for the two senior members of the podcast. Regain your composure, man. Come on. Connor. <clears throat> yeah, composure again. Um please, please, somebody pick up the phone. Um <laughs> You've got a couple of minutes, maybe, to squeeze you in, so get the phone picked up. Um, Kerr, um, I guess, you know, I don't even... What do you make about Lewis was saying there, about the start of these games, about the young players, as I was asking about? Um, you know, obviously we've got to use squad rotation, haven't they, coming back off the European games and given the injury list we've had, obviously we're getting players back in the door. Um, do you think they've got an important role to play, certainly in the, the short term just now, whether we're, while we're getting players back? Well, she's not got a lot to play for. If you look at the bench the night, I know that's Europe as well, and that's an issue because you can only play the same amount of players for countries or out with Europe and certain young players and stuff. So it just depends on what he's going to do. He, has to, he just plays his best team, first of all. The players he trust the most, and I'm just, I couldn't stop laughing at Lewis here. He's trying his best not to slag Seema, but he started at a negative point. <laughs> I don't think he's very good. <laughs> they didn't ruin the house to try to see how good he was. <laughs> that was brilliant. <laughs> oh. But uh, listen, Seema, he, he, he is probably right with a point. But Seema, when he started, everybody was saying he doesn't, he doesn't look great, but 
he's come on to a game and the boy's scoring goals and he's trying, his work rate's phenomenal and he has got a good touch on him. He's got a burst of pace. Listen, for somebody on loan, he's putting on a shift for somebody who's just here on loan because there's not the other guys who are here permanently who are not putting on a shift. So that's the difference you see him on some of them. Evening, yeah. gentlemen, how are you? Evening, boss. Hi. We were, we were going around swimming. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I, I, I want to make a point about the game on Sunday, but but firstly, I have to say fair play to Connor because I have been winding him up big time in the background. Um, I can't even repeat some of the stuff that I was saying, um, but fair play to him for managing to keep a, keep a straight face. But no, listen, the big thing for me on Sunday is, and maybe this is petty, and you can all tell me if I'm just being petty here, um, but it would appear that Stephen Naismith is quite close to losing his job as manager of Hearts. And I would love nothing more than if that came after we absolutely scud them on Sunday. That I would love nothing more than for that to happen. Well, I mean, I that would be that would be lovely. I mean, you know, Lewis, we obviously we talk about Hearts actually quite a lot um, on the Scottish Football Show. And we've said for a while that he's Coach's been on a sugary peg, so um, nothing against nothing against Hearts, by the way. It's just Stephen Nesmith can't stand them. I think we'll agree. Yeah. So, <laughs> Not, nothing to disagree with there, is there? Um, the boy was a player, though, wasn't he? <laughs> he was a player. It's just a shame he's an absolute prick. I mean, to be fair, some of the greats are pricks, but um, I, I. But but I but on that point then and, and, and Lewis I know that you wanted to come in there because I could see the, the the movement in your face but a, a big if we give them a good thumping on Sunday that could be curtains for Naismith. I I think he's gone. I, I think he's gone regardless of, of the result. Well, I say that I think we'll win. So whether it's it's one 0 or, or six 0 I think he's gone. I think he's um he's lasted longer than I, I personally would have thought because they, they, they didn't give the, the previous manager too long and he'd achieved a lot more than, than Naismith did. So, surprising he's, he's survived this long. But, I, listen, I fully second that, that thought about, you know, desiring to see that wee man lose his job because he is a, he is a snake. And despite his football and talents, I'm not a fan of his, his personality. But um, I, I think he'll, he'll be gone, regardless of how big the result is. And I mean, obviously, Connor, you've been asking the questions tonight, so I'll ask you one. Um, you know, Hearts aren't in a great place. Um, I didn't see their game against Celtic, but by all accounts, from what I heard, that they were absolutely horrendous. We obviously haven't had the best start to the season, although it seems to have picked up um, since Clermont has came in. Um, but if there's one game you want when you're trying to rebuild that confidence and, and trying to get your point across to the players about how you want to play, if there's one thing you want, is a home game against Hearts. No, 100%. I mean, right now, I, I, even an away game against Hearts, I'd take right now because I wouldn't really fear um, with the form that they've been on. There's nothing to fear there at all. Um, I think it's a perfect game for us to bounce back in. Obviously, we've spoke again about the options up front and stuff like that, but I don't see any reason why even if it's like last week where you get a couple of different goal scorers on the sheet, for me, we should be putting three or four past him at the weekend um, without much trouble with, with how poor they've been, quite frankly. Um, and I, if that spells end of Stephen Naismith, then all the better as far as I'm concerned. Um, certainly as the ideal game to come back after after Prague, I would I would say. Um, <clears throat> and we are... I mean, I, mean, I, know you, I know we're about to finish, but just, just I'll, I'll go to Kerr really, really, really quickly. On that, obviously, Clermont has said that he's going to have to use all the players that's available to him because we've got a lot of games coming up. Is this a game, do you think, because I heard you talking about it before I came on, is this a game, do you think, he's looking at it going, do you know what, maybe I could throw an Adam Devine in there, a Ross McCausland, an Aaron Lyle, I could shake it up a wee bit just because of how poor hearts are. And you're on mute, by the way, Kerr, and you weren't on mute until I came on, so you're doing it on purpose. I think you might have to just be a numbers we've got. Listen, I, I said earlier, I would, put, I would start Ross McCoy's in the morning. I think he would offer more than Lammers at the moment. I can give it a loose to about Lammers, but I just don't think... I could be wrong, I hope I'm wrong, but I just don't think it suits the way... Scott, I don't think it suits Scottish football. I just think there's something missing, but I hope he start. I thought, I think Ross has done well since when he's come on, or when he started. I think Ross has done really well. 
and he, and he, he wasn't one of the names that you would look at a B team and say it's Ross. He wasn't the ones that was always getting mentioned, but sometimes it's the boys you don't hear about it come through and make a name for themselves. So I would start Ross tomorrow. If Zach was available, Zach would be in the frame for minutes as well, because I thought he'd done really well against St. Martin. And there's other ones you mentioned, Aaron Lyle. There's also maybe Billy Rice. I know he was kind of playing Europe, the European squad, but he's he can come in. Listen, I would rather start Billy Rice a lot of games before John Lindstrom, but that's up to the manager, I have to say. But Ross, uh, Ross my cause in that moment, he's not let us down when he's played Martin. I think he offers us something different. I think he's more direct, and I would, I would give him a go. The only reason, Connor, that I asked that was because we do have a lot of games. Um, and, you know, we do have a, 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 a shortish squad. That was easy for me to say in a Scottish accent, wasn't it? Um, but if, if, if you are come out and you're looking at it and you're going, if there's any game that I can make one or two changes, um, it's got to be hearts, isn't it? It's got to be hearts at home. And you're on mute, by the way, which and the standards have just dropped dramatically. This is unbelievable. You're still on mute. I mean, it's crazy. It's mental. <laughs> and Kerr's on mute, and Lewis is on mute, and everybody's on mute, and nobody's talking. <laughs> He's still, <laughs> He's on, still mute. on mute. <laughs> on mute. <laughs> you, you'll be in Connor's hat last Martin, in the middle of cheek. <laughs> I mean, uh, is that mute button stuck on? I take it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Do you know what, folks? He's he's gave up. He's gave up. He's gave up. <laughs> there, okay, well, just just as well, I jumped on then, um, and I will end the show there. Can I just say thank you for the, the people who called in? We're looking to try and get more calls on because if I can start getting more calls consistently, then we can do longer shows. Um, I know a lot of people sometimes it's a bit daunting and stuff like that, but. Don't fear, pick up the phone when on a Monday and a Friday night, 01416 Save it in your phone um, so you can remember it and get your calls. And thank you to our sponsors, NordVPN, um, for helping us bring you the sh all the shows that we do. If you want 63% off a two-year subscription, then jump on the link in the description. Thank you to everybody who's commented tonight. Um, you know, the interaction we get is absolutely fantastic. The numbers that we get are brilliant. Please do subscribe on YouTube if you haven't already. We are uh, jumping towards 10,000 subscribers, which would be some milestone. Absolutely fantastic. Follow us on all the socials. All the links for that are in the description as well. Um, thank you, Kerr. No boy, I'm I, don't on. Know, I, don't, I, don't why, I really don't know why it takes you so long to come off mute, but there you go anyway. Um, Lewis, who has already came off mute, thank you very much. I at least know where my mute button is. So, it, <laughs> do you know what? It's crazy. Hey, like it's, times. <laughs> they're, they're, they're just all too old. That's what it is. Um, so, yeah, thank you, everybody. We'll be back on Sunday um, for pre match build up around about quarter past three. Um, but make sure you're subscribed with your notifications switched on so you know exactly when the podcast is going to start. And then, of course, we will have full match reaction as well. So, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And we shall speak to you all very, very soon.